Well, it's now good afternoon. We're down working uh, non-stop. We haven't changed our tops. It's still the uh, the new Show Me logo and the new Show Me tops. I think we should have put Show Me TV on and all, but we'll get that changed. Might do a couple of... We do a quiz over Christmas. We might do a couple of... Bit, offer some tops to be sent out, so hopefully. So we've got the ins and outs. The club we're picking at the moment is Wakefield. Hopefully we can do you justice on our opinions. Again, whether you like it or not, we're going to give your honest opinions on what we think of the signings and and, and, and that. So over to Joe, first off. Uh, I, you know, we probably need to say this at every club. The main thing at Wakefield at the moment is the two coaches. Yeah, James Ford. M- Mark Applegarth. Mark Applegarth. And James Ford. Two young coaches two fantastically rated coaches, two brilliant people in my opinion. Uh, I really get on with them. Uh, my, 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 my friendship with them both is, is high. I've got a lot of time for both of them. I think it's the biggest gamble ever. I've told them both this. You know, I think they've both been put in there and, and Wakefield historically, whether you like them or not, have always kept their head above water. Is that success for Wakey? Well, no, because Chelsea were challenging top six at one time. Last year they had a good run, off run, good run. They've always produced good, exciting rugby. They've always produced good, exciting players. But these young lads are, are going to go for it. They've got so much belief in themselves. So I think the best signing of before Joe goes into the players is is two of the best signings that they've made here is these two coaches. They've, they're going to go for it. Um, they've got no fear. They've got no fear of what's coming. Um It'll be brilliant to see the journey they're going to go on. And, and, and I'll tell you what, I'll say this, and we might pick it up in 12 months. Regardless of what happens, and, and I'm going to give you my opinion after you've done your ins and outs on, on what happens, where I think. I think they'll both learn so much. I think they both should stay in the, you know, both will learn so much on this journey. They could be in 10 years' time. They could be England coaches, this guys. They could be, you know, they could be coaches who go on to NRL. They're that highly rated. But what we're going to do here today is this journey, what they're going to go on this year, is get ready, put your hats on, because it's going to be a roller coaster, an absolute roller coaster for them. And they're going to learn about each other. They're going to learn about the squads. You know, Mark, I think it would Mark be the youngest youngest coach in, in Super League this year, probably. I think, what is Mark, 36, 37? That'll be right up there as the youngest. Uh, over to you, Joe. Uh, yeah, again, we'll start with the outs as we've been doing. Um, so, I think this is where you were hinting at here. There's some massive names uh, at the club that are leaving. Um, I'll start off the two uh, players that Hull KR have took, which um two massive players for them, I think, last year, at the end of last year, James Batchelor and Yusuf Aydin. Uh, Yusuf Aydin, one of, the be- uh, one of the most highly rated young players coming out of Wakefield. Uh, Hull KR have gone and got him. And then, obviously, James Batchelor. Um, we know what the other Batchelor has gone and done at Saints, and we know how good he was. they both were at York a couple of years ago. Obviously, uh, I'm sure Ford- Fordy might have been sad to see him go since Fordy were there with him at York originally. But, yeah, um, two massive players there that I think could have been stalwarts for years to come at Wakefield have left and sadly gone uh, to Hull KR uh, the third one uh, then there's two lads actually that have gone to the championship I'll cover Sadiq Adebayi and Brad Walker both gone to Keith the Cougars uh, Sadiq sadly could never just break in and get that consistent game and I think same with Brad just couldn't get that consistent guaranteed game time I think they, they're at the age now that they need um, they've got teen and then they've got Quite a few. And then the last big name, actually, before a few that have left, Tom Johnson, Catalans. Again, massive loss. One of the highest rated wingers in the competition. Um, brilliant player. He's had his problems, Joe, with injuries, and he's, 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 he will yeah. miss him, but he's missed a lot of... Yeah, yeah. The last three years, he's missed half a season every year, so I think, you know, yeah, they'll miss him. 50-50 on that one. Yeah, I'm going to say... The, 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 and then, fr- and then three have left: Tino Arona, uh, Thomas Mins. Uh, I, I think they were both in and out, weren't they? And then the biggest one, in my opinion, the leader of uh, what you saw at the Catalans at the end of last season in the crowd, our um, our player has uh, gone back to Australia, David Fafita. Just announced it actually that Dave's got a club. He's playing. Uh, I texted him the other day. Actually, he's, he's going to play. I think it's County gone back to his roots, wants to get involved in coaching, wants to get a bit back to the game. Probably my... 
I've had some fantastic overseas players, but he'd be right up there with my uh, favourites. And somebody, you know what? I, I, again, I'll use this word. I got Dave when he was about 27, 28 here. We met and we just got on. And, and, and I find it a real pride in what we do that we kept together for five years. And we got a lot. Pff, I could tell some fantastic stories. I think, you know, we were going to move to Cass at one time. We met Cass. And that one nearly done. Warrington at one time. We had a lot of interest at Warrington. There were a little bit of interest at Leeds one year. He stayed with Wakey. He stayed. He, he made it through the rain with Wakey. And I've said before, you know, a pleasure, a pleasure for us to deal with him. So very often an English agent gets to deal with an overseas place. They will usually historically come over with their own agents. David made it quite clear that he didn't have an agent or he'd not spoke to his agent and he was looking for somebody. And we we were lucky enough to get involved with him. But I, I absolutely love him. I think he's a massive loss to Super League. Slowly 33, that's the shame, isn't it? You know, you look at it and you go, wow. You, you, we said we talked about, you know, earlier on about Kevin Proctor coming in and you're looking at Dave being 33 and Proctor being 33. And you're looking at that. He's played a lot higher standard than Dave. I think Dave only got 17 NRL appearances in his career. I think Proctor's probably going to have 100 plus. And you've just said, I got it wrong. He got, you know, he's played all last year. But he'll, listen, if Proctor can be a 50%, 50, 50 of the player Dave's been over here. He, 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 you know, we used to laugh about not getting in dream team and, and not getting this and that. And as I said, Dave, at some tries he scored. I think if he did a highlight reel of a prop in Super League, David would have won. Full length tries. You know, he's he, he, the one at, I don't know if it were Leeds, when he went down wing, 40 metres and he's putting pass in. He, he just did things a little bit different. He did everything a little bit different. He could run and bounce people off. He could. It was a lovable, big blad and all. You know, Dave, I used to think, can Dave swing him? If it come to it, would Dave put some away? <laughs> I, I never got the chance to see because I think he had such a lovely nature inside of him. Only time I used to see him get fired up with Wigan. You know, he used to do something with Wigan used to make him a bit, a little bit because I think he saw Wigan as being very determined and aggressive and he used to think, hey, I'm going to stick up for these young lads. And so Dave has most of his best games against Wigan, but he's, uh, God, honestly, so sad. And like I said, one day I hope he, he can do the journey. We can talk about his journey over here and how many times, honestly, I, that, 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 how many times we were that close to signing. And David said, you know, that's it. You know, I'm falling out of love of Wakey. I'm definitely going to do this. And then he had a love for Wakefield, which is which, which was just scary, really, because he always had it. It was like heading back home. He had an affinity with lads. He felt very responsible for the lads. My dream never happened, Joe. I wanted him to come. I wanted him to play with his brother David and, and do it. I thought that Super League missed a bounce. We should have done it 18 months ago, tried to make it happen. If I'd have been at a club and an official at a club, I would have gone for them too for 12 months just for the absolute razzmatazz. <laughs> You'd have gone, here we go, let's go. Two of them on front foot. You needed a lot of defenders in there, by the way. You needed a lot of work rate around it. You'd need plenty of Morgan Smithies <laughs> to, to hoover that. But I tell you what, you'd have them two coming off bench. I, 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 I used to have this dream about it happening. Just, just sit there and think, God, can you imagine 20 minutes in? Bopper and his brother get up off the bench. And they're gonna, you know, they've got 150 metres apiece in them straight away. They've got hands that can play pre-line. They can do everything that you dream about in attack. And then they're both... David was such a big character. So, yeah, I think one of the sorry, best players ever to come and play in our comp. I've got nothing else to say on that one. And then the <laughs> brilliant. And then the final one, Jacob Miller, the starting half, uh, one of the leaders in the Wakey camp. And he's gone to obviously. Best mates with Dave as well. That was a funny one. They were best mates. Oh, were they? Yeah, yeah. really close. Always together. He always fought so well at Milky. In fact, he'd asked Milky a lot of advice. He'd, he'd say, oh, I'll, I'll speak to Jacob. He, he, they had a really good friendship. Oh, brilliant. Well, yeah, again, so two leaders of the team really gone there. So. It's a shame, but uh, hopefully they can. They've replaced them. Um, the Inns, they've sat after a couple of big names leaving. They've signed four players, I believe. Um, uh, the first one I'll mention uh, is Renouf Atoni. Uh, he's twenty-seven years old. Was at Canterbury last year. Didn't get a game though. Uh, so they've obviously have a contact within the Canterbury, or obviously an agent, or they've got, they know somebody that said no, he, he he's a good lad. He needs a bit of game time. He's obviously twenty seven, hitting his prime age, so he needs to be playing. And obviously they've gone and they've gone and got him. Uh, do you know any more about this lad? No. Nope. Um, 
the next one is Samsoni Lange, uh, 29 years old, was at Catalans. Uh, I'd say solid, and he's just solid. Um, not done a blow the roof off, but actually had some brilliant game. Every season has some brilliant games, and hopefully can replicate that. I think plays quite a few times, not injury prone. So. Um, I think you've got some stats to back that up because you know what the fans are like at the moment when you make a comment like that. No said, yeah, he never gets injured, but said, no, Joe, he only played nine times last year. So I wouldn't be saying to me like that if you're not going to back it up. I'll double. I'll double check that one. Sam might have to check that one out. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe's come out with one of them comments where I think he could have been caught <laughs> out. One thing about him, never misses games. Yeah, 107 games for Catalans over three or four years. Brilliant. So, yeah. good, good comment, Jay. Well done. I got nervous. We'll keep it in. I got nervous, but I think I'm... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so you've got Samisoni Lange, uh, like I said, very solid. And then um, I'll mention Morgan Smith, obviously a show-me player, show-me legend, even his younger age. I think he's now obviously 24, so legend of the... Uh, Legend to show me even in his young age what story he's had played it played at most levels in his story, and he so a uh, bit about Morg dad. I was so happy I got the deal done. So happy that he, he wanted to go back full time. He'd done brilliant at Featherstone, I think twenty some tries last year. Yeah, top so there was In fact, I still can't get out of it. They got dropped for that playoffs. So I'd, I'd still challenge Brian and Mac on that. I'd still like to have a chat with Mac and say, what did you see? in swapping that at that stage. He, I think he thought that Morgan won't get in his centre involved enough. Well, I'd challenge that. He would run it, he, he would doing what the modern players do. He would run in into defences and committing people. And he was sensational. For you to change it at that stage, I think, I'd no, have yeah. stuck with him. I think he's a fantastic signing. I think he's value for money. He wants a chance. He can play seven. He can play nine. I think he'll... End, I, I'm going to make a big call. I think he'll end up playing 15, 20 games this year. I, I think he'll play it. I think once they see... Uh, where he's at and his levels are at, I think they'll realise that he'll play. Um, they obviously give the squad numbers to um, like Lino and um, Gaskill. Yep. And they've got the, the. But I think I think Morgan will push through. I think Morgan will push through, uh, and I think Gaskill end up playing a bit of centre. I think that's what'll happen, or he'll play somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, I think Morgan will play. Um, now here's one for you while we're on about ins and outs and I'm listening to this. Uh, we haven't mentioned Kevin Proct. We've done that on Inside the Deal. You can yeah. say a little bit about Kevin, Kevin Proct. Yeah, quick one. Uh, New Zealand international. I think he played 26 games for Gold Coast in a very successful season for what they were predicted last year. Uh, played in the final playoff game, which means he were, he were there or thereabouts. Uh, off the, an off-the-field incident, I think, meant he got... Uh, meant he got off, I think, to do with vaping or something like that. Uh, so uh, he was available and they've gone and got him. He's 23 year, uh, <laughs> he's 33 years old and uh, second rower slash probably a middle in our Super League level. Uh, so that's Kevin Proctor, legend of New Zealand, great New Zealand player over the years, and he's had some brilliant... It's right character, looks right character. They're going to replace Dave with a character. I think they've, I think they've got one. They went, yeah. Yeah. Um, but looking at this job, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it straight off the bat. You know, this this we've got the squad numbers one to one to eighteen here, and obviously Lewis Murphy is not in the one to eighteen, which I'm surprised at after last year. It is what it is. Morgan's not in there. Morgan's not in there, and there's a, and, and there's a few others. But looking at here, we've got. I, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to say this as honest as I can, and again, sometimes we upset people, and and people might say, "Oh, this." I think the squad. Is as light as what I've seen, and I think it's lost a few. You've mentioned some players lost there. How do you replace David? Uh, yeah, you can get better work rate than David. You maybe get better people in D. You certainly won't get anybody in attack like David boys. It'd he, be impossible. He, he was that good. I think Milky's been a sensation for a Milky. People don't realise this. Jacob Miller went to Hull, come, come over with a big reputation. I think from West Tigers. And he came to Hull and he, he went down like a lead balloon at Hull. He wasn't, he, him, and, he, him and a lad called uh, Jordan Rankin who ended up at Huddersfield. They yeah, came yeah, just... and they blew out both of them. They, but there was no, I went to watch him twice and I was like, D-. he then went to Wakey and absolutely got better and better and better and more influence every year. To the stage of last year that, the word is that Wigan wanted him. The word, the word is, honestly, that Wigan were chasing him all over and they didn't get him and he, they, they didn't have enough cap space to do the deal. 
and he signed at Cass. So it's a massive loss. If you look at the, again, we'll start with the pivots, Joe. We'll go Lee Gaskell, Mason Lino, Liam Hood, and then we're going to go Max, Max Chowett. Yeah. I, I'm going to be respectfully, Udi's had a right, you know, Udi, Udi's one of them. And I had Liam when I was a young lad. Liam Hood has done amazing. Amazing from that little lad who were playing on wing. Liam were playing on the wing, Joe, at, at Leeds. Do you know that? No. He was a winger. And one day somebody said, why don't you play him at Ucker? And this is it, middle of standing. How's that happened? Uh, I don't know if it was John Bastian. Liam might tell us if he watched the show, but somebody... T- anyway, the, the, it might have been Barry Mack. What, Some, what made him... What made They must have seen go- something in his pace and they saw his aggression. Anyway, he went Ucker, boom, history, bang, straight into Leeds first team. And then he's gone, Lee, he's gone, other clubs, I, I, I probably said four or five clubs, he's played championship. He's a tough hombre, he's Liam, a tough kid. Thought last year at times, Liam, were sensational. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, Salford, sorry, he's been, he, he's, he's he's right up there. And I'm quite proud of having been part of that journey for him. Young lad who were coming up, who had a lot of it. Uh, he were a right street lad, Liam. He, he had them eyes. If he looked at you, he were looking through you and he, he, you had to have a... <laughs> I, I knew how to handle him. I, you know, that was probably what I, my gift was. But he were, he, you could see him. He were, he were big mates with John Bateman. They, they'd come from the same thing. But Liam has done amazing. But I call it straight. Liam, Max Jowett, Gasky and Lino have got the biggest gamble ever to keep Wakefield up. I think it's got to that four against most of the other fours. I'd need more. Max has been talked about as being a great fullback since he was a young lad. Actually, a lot of pressure on him unfairly, by the way. People try and throw him under a bus as a young lad. He's not good enough. He's not this. Came back last year. Willie Poaching got the best out of him with Franny Cummings. To be fair, he started to play again. I'm hearing this year that he's sensationally training. Fordy, Fordy spoke very highly of him. So did you know Mash. But again, you're looking here, George Tafua, Corey All Reese, Lynn, Tom Lynham. Tom Lynham, whether we like it or not, went to Ake, he got sent to Fed. He's got squad number five. Yeah. By going to Fed, he, 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 he played overweight, he wasn't motivated. He, 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 to me, he, he, there's too many question marks going down the list. Reese, can Reese get his England form back? Reese Lynn had a carry, when he went, best when he went with Bish. I mean, Bish had a, a lovely combination. They knew how to work together. Bish always took the first carry. Reese had taken the third or fourth carry, and he started to get 140, 50 metres. Can he come back to that form? Lee Gaskell, historically, Gaskey carries a lot of injuries. You, if you went through Gaskey's six or seven year, you'd get a shock. He's probably had maybe eight years. Gaskey was the one of the highest rate. Cameron Smith, again, Lee Gaskell at 16, Everybody in the country was on about Lee Gaskell. They're saying there's this halfback, fullback at Saints is going to be a superstar. He's called Lee Gaskell. Watched him in the academy. Lee's never really hit the heights in his career that he should have done. Yeah. Even though lads say he's a very nice lad. But again, Lino, I thought Mason last year at times were fantastic. Times were very average. I went to watch him when he got dropped and he played for Wakefield Field Car Reserves Reserve, yeah. at Jewbury. And he looked all right, but he didn't. He didn't go into there against Lord Unes and look like he was any good. He just looked all right. So the question marks there, the big raps I've got for last year, Matty Ashurst, I thought was sensational. He's a real solid player. But the lad you've said, Joe, Batchelor, why would Wakey lose Batchelor? I, I, I need to speak to... You need to get these answered. And, the, and you know, why would you lose Batchelor? If it were over money, what type of money would make you lose a player like that with that type of attitude? You've got Liam Kay, who's a winger. Josh Bowden, Rinoff for Tony. Again, Lee Kershaw, a little bit like Ashton Golden, what we talked about earlier on. Every club and every team need an Ashton Golden. Every club needs a Lee Kershaw. Jordy Crowther, Wakefield through and through, love it. D, and his best year, Jordy. Yeah. And I had Jordy as a young, a young player. Absolutely credit to himself, making the most of his career and giving it a right go. Comes from a good family, but loves Wakey. Big years for these lads, but I tell you now, Joe, and I've got to call it as I as as I see it. They're the bookies' favourite to go down. If you ask twenty five people in any Super League standard who's going down this year, twenty odd are going to throw Wakey in that category. I'd be yet to see many people who would say that Wakey can avoid relegation because of how Liam Liam throwing the kitchen sink in. That don't make you a winner, by the way. Liam got to prove that they're not going to win every game like they did in the championship. 
And I think Wakey will be hoping that by June, Lee are all fighting each other because there's that many big names there. There's no tin spirit. And Wakey are flying because they've got some good results and because they love each other. And these lads are all going to coach them. And now my, my heart goes out to Michael. My heart goes out to Wakey. I wanna, I, we cannot afford, and we said it on the show last week, we can't have Wakey in Cass having bad years here. Not for West Yorkshire. It'd be shocking. It'd be shocking for West Yorkshire because what you know you'll get You'll get a lot of people, and it's dangerous time with IMG around. It's dangerous time with IMG around. What you don't want is IMG saying, well, we can afford to get one West Yorkshire club in. Yeah. Castle. We can't have Castle Wakey. We want one out of them two. Yep. Are you listening, or are you flicking somewhere else? No, I'm listening. Is, so I, I'm worried for Wakey, Joe. Yeah. I think it's the biggest hurdle they've had in the last 10 years. I think Michael's... The ground looks fantastic, by the way. I think Sam can get some pictures... I went down there about a month ago. Unbelievable what they're doing to the ground about time. But they're getting it done now. The council are helping the Wakefield, Michael and the, and the shareholders are putting the money where the mouth is and they're improving the facilities. So work's been done behind, but all that can stay aside because if they get relegated this year and then they're in the championship, they're thinking if we apply as a championship club or they're accepting that they are a champions club, I'm hoping... Wakefield have always got through on skin of the teeth. They've always managed to get through by signings that you don't think are good. Suddenly, they could become household names. It's weird. They're actually <laughs> very good. And I've got to give Michael a massive, and I've got to give Chessie at the time, massive raps on finding these players who everyone's gone, oh, it's these. By end of year, you're going, well, everyone knows who uh, Kilepi Tangino is. He's unbelievable. Probably the best players in Super League. Everybody knows who. They've managed to do that. The biggest gamble I've ever seen is this year. The, well, the this bottom three on the bookies is Wakefield. Uh, Wakefield are predicted to be bottom. Then it's Hull KR. Then it's Lee. So you, we've done Hull KR. You've said top two, top three. And then you've got Lee. Salford are then next. Hull FC are next. Castle and then... So I don't think... I, I, I'll back you up. I don't know who else... Apart from maybe a Lee or a, a side that really underdoes themselves with the squad they've currently got, I don't know who else really enters that conversation. It's a well, you probably they've got to drag somebody in. They've got to uh, they've got to hit strike early. They've got to get it off why we've to afford in why the World Cup's on and these fatigued players. They've got to hit early and they've got to hit hard, and then they've got to dig results out of somewhere and and, and they've got to drag one or two clubs. And these are the clubs historically who, who, who Wakefield are saying. I tell you now, Salford, they're thinking, and, and I'm with you. I don't think anybody's dragging Salford in. I think they've made even better signings. So I think, and, and Rowley, we're going to do it on Salford maybe next week. Paul can coach. Paul Rowley can coach, and, and, they've, and, and they've got a way of negotiating players in there. I don't know how they do it, to be honest. If it's true, they play off less on cap. <laughs> it's, just, it's just beyond belief. Then they'll say, can they drag one of the old clubs in? So this is what they're hoping that either all FC explode or all KR are not as good as what I think. Well, the second favourite to go to down. down. The then they're thinking of dragging Cass Vegas in. Local things. Are they trying to get Cass to be dragged in? But when we're using the word drag in, the other clubs are probably thinking... They're not even in... They're not going to drag us in because yeah. we're above that. And, and, and So I said, here's what, here's what I'll say to you now. And, and Willie Poaching texted me at uh, end of last year. Thank you for what you said on the show, Craig. He said, it was very humbling what you said about how well we did. They did. Whether Willie and Franny were the answer, they actually did well. The, the results, percentage-wise, we said we're actually better than quite a few of the Super League ones. But these two young lads have got the biggest job I've ever seen. And last year, the emergence of Lewis Murphy as a superstar, as a young superstar outside of Corey Hall, them two were the most exciting young edge in the comp. Bar anybody. Yeah. Bring who you want. Them two together, the athleticism, the size of them. I, used, I went two or three times just to watch them. It, it, I lo absolutely love watching them. Yeah, it upset me a bit when they played a couple of games where they put Corey on the other edge, didn't they? I think in, yeah. the, in the one that seems to put him on the other edge and it kind of lost that spark a bit, didn't it? Because the yeah. spark is them two young guns them going together. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Warrington. I think Thulerson, um got the centre, uh, the young centre. But I think they were Thulerson 20 or 19 and then the other centre 
Warrington will do it against these two. It was best battle of the day. I watched it and I'm thinking, you've got four players, Murphy, Corey, V, them two, and not one of them's above 21 year old. And they battered each other and they athletic each other, they paced each other. Everything they did with this challenge, I thought just at the end, Corey and Lewis got them. Because Lewis did an half break, you were like, oh my God, Corey just kept going. But what a battle with them four players. What a battle. That's what the game's about. But it, but again, this year, you're looking at it and I'm going, is that the strangest decision ever to put Tom Lynham squad number five and not, and not, and not Lewis? Yeah. You know what I mean? What, what, what did Tom show? What have they seen in Tom to give him that? They're probably just doing age there, aren't they? I think well, it's, you've, you've got to... Put it that I think that's probably there. It's got to be. I, d I don't see another argument for it. Um, like you said, yeah, it's. And again, I think they've just. I, I just think they've lost too much. They've lost you. The players that they've lost are just a lot of Cass's best players last year that you mentioned, apart from Lewis and Corey, are James Batchelor, Jacob Miller. They've got Big Dave. Big Dave at certain points, obviously, I think certain but Tom, Tom Johnson in the whole of going into the year, you would have said he's one of the best players, obviously, like I said, with injuries. So who and then you've then you've got they've lost squad players as well. Sadiq, squad good squad player, Arona brilliant at some points, then a decent squad player. You've they've I, I, I don't, I, well, even even Udi, if Udi, if Udi only plays, Udi, a lot of pressure on Liam. They, they put Jordy Crowther at Uckle last year to cover Liam. They've got a young lad called Harry Bow, so I, I, yeah. I do like. I, I've always liked Harry. I think he's got a real chance. Um, they need they need some young lads. Harry to come needs through. to come through again, doesn't he? They, they need a couple of them to come they through do. with Oliver Pratt the centre. There's a few yeah. there who we've ta who we've talked about. They probably need two or three of them to come through and become that player like Lewis and. Uh, Corey did last year. Yeah, but as I say, I, 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 Wakefield fans, we're, we're going to be there. We, we love to go Wakey. I'm definitely there next year. Um, I, I love watching Wakey. I, I hope you've got it right, lads. And my two, my, my closest coaches in the game, you know, I've got to get it right because these are young lads, and I don't want people to, you know, you look at it and you're thinking, what's what is a success for Wakey next year to avoid relegation? Is that? Well, yeah, of course, that's that been. Judging on what the book is, what people are saying, that would be a tremendous success. I'm willing to say it's a massive success. On what wow. Once you say a year off saying that's, you know, that. Sadly, I'm not, I'm not happy saying it, but I think that's the realistic point is that a lot of the w bad teams from last year uh, who 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 were who were near the bottom last year? You'd say Warrington. Uh, you can't see them. Never, you? You no can't, chance. You can't exactly. You'd say um, who else? Kr. We we you put in the top two or three after last year. Um, who who else? It was uh, Wakefield, Warrington. Obviously, yeah. The, the, there's no one else. Who all the all the bad teams that you you could say have been bad. But I know what you're all saying. All the worst. All the worst position teams in the league from last mm. year have improved and. Arguably, the competition that mid table for next year is going to be the most competitive I've seen it in years. But there's no one apart from Lee, the big question, aren't they? Because they've got the players, they've got the names to do brilliant, but they've also they're on they could explode, couldn't they? Yeah, so they're the ones who you say could enter that conversation. Not saying they will, but but they're, 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 they're the only difference between decks. I've, I've said this every year about the decks. Dex is still capable in May of going in and spending half a million quid. If they, got, if they got the yeah. first bit wrong, they've got somebody who just walks in. Yeah, and but goes the cap, they can't do that with the cap. I don't know if they've got a cap. I, said that I would think they've got a cap of space. I think Chetty told me they've got a cap of space left. So they've left a bit. For Dex, he likes that mid-season. Boom. You know, they brought the lad over. Yeah, Blake Ferguson. Blake Ferguson. There'll be another Blake Ferguson coming halfway through years when he was dropped out of NRL who was a star. And they'll, so I, that's, the, that's the thing. I... I We'll talk about Lee in a bit, but Lee, Lee are putting together something there, and you're thinking you're on about your worst point I've ever seen about recipes. But if you put in the recipe, you know this one's going in a big pot at Lee, and they're just hoping that it fires and and and, and makes something nice. Yeah. Wake here, hoping that when they do this, that Lee explodes because when they put it in the they've oven, got a drag. Eyes. They've got a drag. 
they've got to drag some in. They've got to drag him in, and they've got to find a way of dragging him in. It was Wakey's first game. I think that game becomes. I, I, I'm going to say this. Oh, this is the last note. I would say that Wakey first three games is the most important three games they've had for a lot of years. That's how big I think they're going to get off. Young coaches need the confidence. They need to get off to a good start. Wakey's first three games is where? Uh, home to Catalans. Home to Catalans. Are they? Are they? Oh, God. I don't think they are. I think it's say near first. Yeah, home. And then Wakefield, next one, isn't it? No, who's Wakey playing? Oh my god, my brain! Oh melted. my good oh god! Oh my god, my brain's melted. Sorry, so yeah, I Sam's right. Sam so, yeah. so listen, sorry, Sam. That's an absolutely bit. tough start. Catalans, you know, I'm, I hopefully get Catalans, but Catalans coming to your first game of the season oh, when they're fresh, and then you've got to go to Wigan in second game. So you know, and then Huddersfield at home. So you've got you've got three teams there, or you're going, wow, <laughs> what a start here. Well, then Leeds. Well. That's you know a, that that's, that's just a, that's a the, the, do you know what and I'll say it, finish on that it, 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 it'll be the biggest challenge for Wakefield to stay up this year if they do Michael the sponsors the coaches the s &C, the players deserve the highest this could be the this could be the 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 uh, most amazing journey if you're going to do a Netflix on a club I do it on Wakey this year and I'd have it inside, I'd be like, how is this going <laughs> to yeah. happen? Because if these can pull it off, it, it will be an amazing. Yeah. That's into now on Wakefield. Hope you enjoy it, everybody. Please subscribe. Please leave some comments. Um, and, and, and hopefully, again, we're only we're only two or three weeks. We're ready to go after Christmas. We're ready to go and we'll, all these answers will be found out. But good luck to every club. <laughs>